maybe like off record, work kind of sucks right now. <laughs> I'm leaving Korea because I'm mentally burnt out from teaching. I also lost my dog recently and my grandmother, you know, like not that far apart from each other. Could you briefly introduce yourself? What's up guys, my name is Patrick, also known as TextPetPad on TikTok, and I am a content creator and past English teacher here in South Korea. My name is Sierra Glazebrook. Um, I'm a professional dancer and I also do modeling and singing. I've been here for a year now. And my name is Kida, K-E-D-A. I am from America and also Jamaican. I'm Sarah and I've been in Korea for about nine years almost. Hi, I'm Taylor. I'm 29 years old. I'm from South Africa and I've been living in Korea for three and a half years now. My name is Melody and I've lived in Korea on and off since 2009. My name is Tiara. I'm from America. I'm 28 years old, took me a minute to remember. <laughs> I've been here for about six years. What made you like decide to leave Korea? It's not necessarily that I want to leave Korea, but I think I have hit the wall with teaching. You know, a lot of people here come to teach English and there's only so much you can do in that career. And just the way inflation is and the way the currency exchange is working out, I need to be making USD. You know, I have a college degree and the money is not there anymore. It's not like it used to be a couple of years ago. So it's time for me to go home, try something new, and hopefully come back to Korea. So I decided to leave Korea. Honestly, it was around like five, six months of me living here. Um, I've been to Korea back and forth since about 2017, and I have worked here before, but not um, under like Korean visa. I was working with like American company. And so I realized um, like the novelty kind of wore off pretty quickly <laughs> since I've been here before. But for my type of work, it's actually quite hard. There's a lot of foreigners who move here now uh, with like liking K-pop and liking K-culture, which I think is awesome. But I do think there is a lot of um, inexperienced people who come here and start working. And I think that's amazing. But I also think for people who are um, a little bit more experienced, and are looking for more, I don't think we're getting paid enough. And I also don't think that we're working enough. One thing that um, people really don't talk about, and this is very recent, is that as a foreigner living here, um, there is a long periods of time where you're not working. And depending on the visa that you're on, I'm under entertainment visa, so it's very uh, strict on what you can and can't do. And if you're not working, then like you have to make sure you have an immense amount of savings or like you have family helping you out. Otherwise, you're unfortunately just not gonna be able to live as comfortably as you think you could out here. That's kind of what made me want to move. I want to have a flourishing career and feel comfortable and I'm getting older. So it's just like, uh, I need to be in a place where I know that I can make like a steady income and, and feel okay. I'm leaving Korea because I'm mentally burnt out from teaching. I have realized that though I love children and teaching and working, um, I don't think working in the school field is for me anymore. I've realized it's taking away from the actual things I really want to focus on and that's not fair to me and it's not fair to the kids. So I'm leaving Korea um, because I need to refocus on what I want and come back when I am ready. Family duties back home, I, I think I'm typically not the type of person to like miss home in December. I got really homesick just talking to my family back home and yeah, just kind of like struggling through the, the 2020s. I think it was just time to be maybe like off record. Work kind of sucks right now. <laughs> work culture out here, it really did teach me a lot. Work ethic. I don't want to say I was lazy, <laughs> but uh, definitely uh, I'm sure you know that Korea is a really, really hardworking uh, country. In a sense, they taught me how to work more efficiently, uh, a lot more harder. But after a long time, you do really get burnt out and you do need a break. I've been in Korea for a long time and it's just about my time to leave and follow my own goals and focus on starting my company and getting back to my family as well. So it's just about that time where I can actually leave without feeling guilty too, so yeah. After COVID, things got a lot more complicated, especially emotionally for me. I also lost my dog recently and my grandmother, <laughs> you know, like not that far apart from each other. Just not being able to go back home. It was different when I was here at first and it was just like a matter of, oh, can I afford to go back home? And then my family buy me a plane ticket. But then when it was three years straight of like, I can't go back home and things were changing and everything was kind of like, 
Ugh. And then my first time going home in all that time was because my grandmother was dying. I was kind of just like, I don't know if it's worth it anymore to like work here, especially as a Hagwon teacher and just have two weeks off a year. And it's so like rigid. I can't go for like my sister's wedding or my niece's birthday or anything like that. And I know a lot of people are restricted, but I am um, privileged in a way that I can do something about that situation. I'm leaving because I don't like teaching anymore. and. In Korea, there's like a limited amount of opportunity that foreigners can have in this country. And I want to branch out to go somewhere where I can make more money and also do something that I actually really, really like that I can't do here. So just gonna try a new environment, new temperature where it's always warm and not cold. Well, there's a future, you know, like half, like in Seoul for you, like going back home. I'm job hunting right now. I just, I'm redoing my LinkedIn resume. You know, I've been out the job market for about four years. So, and it's completely changed. COVID changed everything. So now I have the option of remote working, working from home, hybrid. I'm going home to a completely different industry. So I'm really curious to see how it's going to be. Well, I actually do plan on coming back to Korea. Um, I don't think living here long term is in the cards for me, unfortunately. I love it so much here, but I get so much more work back in the States. I just feel more comfortable. I know I'm working more consistently. I know I'm getting paid the wages that I know that I should be getting paid for. And I think kind of Korea has to work on that a little bit when it comes to entertainers, that we need to make sure that we're getting paid livable wages. For the future, I do see myself coming back because I can't not come back here. <laughs> it happens that you currently, you know, like have a book. So can you, you know, like briefly tell us about that book, you know, like a little bit? The book is called Kimi Mani, The Girl Made of Magic. It is a book about a biracial girl. She is is half um, black American and half Korean and it's in English and Korean and it's a children's book focused on allowing them to see diversity and acceptance of themselves and of others. How can they purchase the book? You can purchase it on Amazon. It's internationally available so you can also purchase a per paperback which I would suggest because on the back of the book there is pages that the kids can draw and show their families and the things that they like. But if you don't want to get the paperback, it is also available on ebook version. So if you want to just download it and be able to show your kids on the iPad, that's another option. But it's on Amazon. Moving forward, what is your future plans? Like, are you going to come back to Korea? You know, like, what are you going to do? It's really hard to say. Like, I don't want to leave forever. Maybe just traveling, visiting friends out here, because I did make a lot of good friends. And that's what's hard about leaving. Um, so in the future, I would love to start my own marketing business and help other small businesses work online, their social media presence, their marketing businesses, etc. So I studied that. I have a lot of experience, and I want to start my own business in that field just to make sure that my degree didn't go to waste. For me, I would say the future holds that one day I'll probably open my own business. I like traveling traveling and I like to plan everything for everyone. So like itineraries, vacations, everything. I'm a huge fan of planning. So I'm definitely going to open a business where I travel plan. So you made mention, are you going to come back? Well, I think now I've been in Korea for about half of my life. So uh, Korea is very much a part of me. I kind of like, I really want to learn Korean this year, which is why I've kind of, I'm in the process of like changing my visa and like doing things to make that happen, to have more time, to be less stressed, so I can take the language ac acquisition more seriously. And Korea is just part of my life. I love it here. <laughs> I would like to, yeah. So in case you guys don't know, there's going to be two new visas later on in 2023. There's no details yet, but one of them is going to be a remote working from home visa. So if you want to live in Korea, but work for your home country, um, they're going to allow that visa hopefully later in the year, but there's no details yet, so I can't really give a timeline on to when I'll come back and when not. If Korea will have me again in terms of marketing, um, I would come back, but not as a teacher. Uh, not to live, but to visit, yes. I have a lot of friends that are still here, so I'll definitely come back to see them and see the country. I'll definitely miss it, so I'll definitely visit.